All right, let's switch gears and take a look at generative AI. Gen AI taking the world by storm, especially tech companies. We have just the person to break down how tech companies are adapting to generative AI. Joining us now, Sudhir Chaturvedi. He's the president and executive board member of LTI MindTree. Sudhir, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so let's kind of set the stage here and talk about, well, first before we kind of get in the idea of generative AI, where it's going. Tell us about what your company is, what you all do. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for your time today. So LTI Mindtree is a global tech and technology services and consulting leader. We were formed by the merger of two companies, LTI and Mindtree. Uh, we merged uh, effective November 22. Uh, and this was the largest merger, tech merger in Indian history. So we're 86,000 people today, uh, approximately $4.2 billion in revenue. And most significantly, I think we've been through a complete year, full year of the merger with zero you know, disruption to our clients, which was our number one objective to make sure that our client experience became only better uh, through the merger, which we achieved. And thereafter, you know, we've been working in several areas with, with our clients, especially when they're looking to do large scale transformation and cost reduction. So today our order book is, uh, is about you know, $1.5 billion a quarter, which is about a 25% premium to 20, 25% premium to our revenues. And our large deal pipeline is over $4 billion. So many of the merger thesis that we had that scale will give us bigger opportunities and growth is materializing. So we're very happy with where things are, but most happy that our clients have seen only the positive impacts from a merger. And then you all have some data on some visibility on the generative AI adoption rate. Sure. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so what we are seeing is all clients are working on generative AI. There is absolutely no one who's not doing so. Uh, but our clients are at various stages of their own adoption of AI. Most clients are looking to see how it improves their processes, how it changes the way they work from a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, clients are looking at how it enhances their revenue. Some clients are quite cost-focused as well. And from a tech perspective, it modernizes the technology stack. So, you know, especially clients sitting with old legacy tech stacks can take advantage of generative AI to build more modern technology much faster. And I think those kind of are the four areas that most of our clients are having discussions uh, with us about uh, and internally figuring out, you know, how to make sure that that strategy gets executed at scale. And you talked about how it enhances revenue, but to your yeah. other point, um, how it can address costs. And that's one of the yeah. kind of concerns of kind of the average person of is course. the cost cutting effect. Yeah. Uh, I saw something uh, this week about Klarna yeah. putting more AI yeah. into play. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's got to be generative yeah. AI and how that is helping them manage efficiency. But it was a way they turned to that as a use case and working with open AI as a cost cutting yeah. measure. What do you yeah. make of that? Yeah, I mean, I read about it as well, but I think my view is that, you know, most of our clients, especially in the financial services world, uh, both banking and insurance, the contact center for them is actually not just, you know, it's, it's a main source of experience and revenue, uh, potentially, for, for our clients if they treat it that way. Uh, and what we are finding is that if you can use AI to supercharge your agents rather than replace them, the benefits are far more superior. So then what happens is instead of people going through an IVR and waiting for calls to be answered, you can actually start to you know, get a human on a call much faster because they're powered by AI in order to be able to solve problems in a much more quicker fashion. And I think the experience that the end customer will have will be far superior to what any chatbot can do. So we believe in AI powering humans, you know, in a way that makes them, you know, makes, essentially takes away some of the administrative mm -hmm. parts of their tasks, the grunt, grunt work that they have to do. You know, imagine uh, if a customer calls in and they've got multiple product lines with a, with a bank, for them to have the ability to see all their data in one screen and be able to chat with them, you know, with, with complete understanding of who the customer is, this is all powered by AI real time and then actually have a normal conversation because the AI is capturing the conversation. So you don't need to worry about capturing the, the notes, the yeah. transcripts, and it's capturing the actions as well. The co-pilots pick up words which say, okay, this is the next action. So it's even putting that down. So you can just focus on having a good conversation, keeping your clients happy, and the AI is doing the rest of the work. At the end of the call, you just click on the transcript and say yes. And that means you can do more calls, and I think I would rather take that approach than you know, some, some of the others. It will still cut costs, but it will actually improve customer experience significantly. 
So I, I like it when you put it that way because, yeah. you know, as the average person, we'll speak from the average yeah. person side, not the kind sure. of diving down into the numbers. I'm like, you know, what's to stop generative AI from replacing a human such as myself? <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I like that. So in your, from your point of view, how do you reinforce the, the question of is AI friend or foe? Yeah. Is that the best case for AI as friend versus foe? I mean, that's one of the cases because I think customer service and customer operations is a big part of the focus of, of AI. Uh, but most of the times that I've seen our clients that we are talking to are looking at process improvement. They really don't like to have customers having long wait times, et cetera, et cetera. They do want clients to speak to a, uh, human. You know, a human as soon as possible. Yeah. So all of this, I think, is, you know, we're headed in the right direction there. So on the customer side of the, the other thing that we are seeing you know, big is on the marketing you know, we are doing quite a bit of work for consumer goods companies mm -hmm. and uh, uh, manufacturing clients as well as banking clients in terms of seeing how they can use it to essentially, you know, do more effective marketing campaigns, much more real time, much more realist, you know, being able to you know, design campaigns that are very specific to smaller target markets, etc. So there's a lot that can be done that is actually, you know, not a, you can't do today because you just, yeah. you know, don't have the ability or the cost of doing so is prohibitive. But here, what happens is now, for example, we've got a client where they send out emails to high net worth individuals whenever there's a rate change or any significant market event. Now these emails are sent with a lot more contextual data. You know, these are the asset classes that you hold with us. This is your plan with us. Right. These are how these interest rate changes are likely to affect you. You might want to be on this call because mm -hmm. you can do a real time Q&A and, and decide what, whether you need to change your investment mm -hmm. strategy. Now this is a much better you know, way to get clients interested in this than sending one generic email saying so and so webinar yes. is being hosted. So there are tons of use cases that we can have. In fact, I'll give you one more, which I'm very personally very excited about. Mm. This is something that we do with the, with the agency that manages refuge, refugees globally. And uh, this is a, it's a growing problem in the world today. And every, every country has its own, you know, there are some global laws that govern refugees, but there are local laws as well. The UN has its own protocols. So it's very difficult for people on the ground to know exactly what's going on in terms of operations, in terms of financials, right. in terms of you know, the, the code of conduct that they're supposed to follow. So we've created a Gen AI based framework that actually has all of this under one framework. So they can just do natural language questions to say, what do I, you know, what do I need to comply with? What's the policy saying? Right. And this is really helping millions of people on a daily basis because the people that are helping them are able to get information much faster. Okay. Without Gen AI, this would not have been possible. All right, Gen AI, friend to you. Yeah. We'll see. I'm on the fence. <laughs> I do think there's some good uses. All right, thank you, Sudhir. Our thanks to Sudhir Chaturvedi, President and Executive Board Member of LTI Mind Tree.